Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 10. So um, as I mentioned before, Pachinko is a bit longer of a book. So again, I would encourage you to use the study guide and also plan your reading because you're going to need a little more time this week and next week to read this book. Uh, it's longer than the other ones that we're doing. And it's a little bit more literary as well. So um, for this week, you have another lecture. So last time I talked more about just kind of who and what and where. Um, in the lecture for this week, I get into some of the themes and symbols and, and messages of this book. I picked this book, even though it's quite long, um, because the author really has an intention to talk about types of characters who would not always be talked about or featured in literature. So the idea of identity is really, really important in this book, that these are kind of the, not exactly the underclasses, but they sort of might be thought of that way. I also think that it has, uh, like our some of our other books, a lot of interesting historical details because a lot of people didn't ever really learn about the, the annexation of Korea by Japan and the, the treatment of Koreans uh, by Japan uh, throughout, throughout history, um, particularly around World War II and, and after. So I think that it's quite interesting. I'd like you to think about the ways in which a lot of these characters are marginalized and also compare them to our last book with First They Killed My Father. What is it like to be living in poverty? What is it like to be living in circumstances of war? Um, how are they trying to survive? What does it mean to survive and what does it mean to be successful? And also, how are people um, facing things like racism and... Um, discrimination. We saw a little bit of that at first they killed my father um, because of the ideals of the communists. But here in this book, we see it quite a bit more. And I think in book one of Pachinko, um, everybody's still living in Korea. So they feel it a little bit, but they really feel it quite a bit more when we get further into book two as these characters live and move in Japanese society. And they kind of ask, what does it mean to be Korean? What does it mean to be Japanese? What does it mean to be an immigrant living in a foreign country where you're not fully accepted? Um, so all of those things are, are quite fascinating. And I do hope that you enjoy the book and I look forward to seeing your discussion. Thanks.